Hey everybody, welcome to Laser Everything. Today we are doing the very first part of installing EasyCAD 2 on any MacBook. And this includes M1, M2, Mac computers, anything running Mac OS. This tutorial is going to work for you. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. And the first step is going to be just making sure that we get everything downloaded that we need in order for this to work. So uh, go ahead and open up your web browser of choice. I'm going to open up Google Chrome and I'm going to log in here. And we're going to head over to lasereverything.net first. Uh, we need to grab EasyCAD and we need to grab the drivers that we're going to need during this process. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to click resources. We're going to come down to downloads and we're going to click software. And inside this area, we're going to find a bunch of different things for EasyCAD 2. Uh, first, we're going to grab the 64-bit drivers. We're going to need those. And we're going to need the EasyCAD 2 Community Edition. So we're going to grab that as well. And those two will download and they'll just be here in our downloads folder. We won't need those for a while, but we will need them eventually. So we're just going to leave them there for now. The other thing we're going to need is a copy of Windows. So we can actually download the Windows 10 ISO file straight from Microsoft. So if we type in Windows 10 download ISO and hit enter, uh, we can see the first result right here, Microsoft. It's Microsoft.com. We want to make sure we're getting this directly from them. We can click download Windows 10 disk image uh, and this will actually give us the ISO file. So uh, we can just scroll down here and we're going to select our edition. Windows 10 Multi Edition, and we'll hit Confirm. And then we have to select our product language. So pick whatever language you want Microsoft Windows to be in. Uh, most of you are going to want English. And then we get an option for 64-bit download and 32-bit download. This entire tutorial revolves around 64-bit software. Unless you're on a really old computer, this is what you're going to want. So uh, we're going to download the 64-bit version of Windows 10. And this is going to take a couple minutes to download. So as soon as this is done, we will go ahead and continue the tutorial. So I'm just going to let that run for a second. Okay, guys, the office internet is really slow right now, but we do have uh, Windows 10, 64-bit version, ISO, downloaded and ready to go. Uh, if we just open our downloads folder and Finder, we can see it right here. So that is great. Uh, there's one last thing that we need to get before we are done. And that's called UTM. So we're going to just type in UTM Mac. And here it is, UTM, Virtual Machines for Mac. And this is how we're going to run Windows in a virtual environment in order to use EasyCAD. So, so we're going to download UTM right now. It's going to just download down here. This one should go significantly faster. And there we go. That is done. So we can close our web browser. We shouldn't need it again. And uh, if we just open up Finder here, and go to our downloads folder. Uh, we can see the DMG. DMG is for installing files on Mac OS. So uh, this is what we're going to want to run first. So let's go ahead and get UTM installed on our Mac. As usual, it's just drag and drop into the applications folder. If we open the applications folder, we can see UTM there. So just a little housekeeping really quick. Let's close Finder. We can close this install dialog box and we can eject this UTM drive from the installation. We don't need any of those things anymore. In fact, while we're in here, we can probably just get rid of this UTM DMG2. Uh, they are rather big files, so uh, we don't want to waste any space because we're going to be using uh, quite a bit of it for a virtual machine. So we'll empty the trash, and we should be left with Windows 10 and our two EasyCAD folders. Easy enough. We'll close this for now, and let's double-click UTM to open it. UTM should open fairly quickly. And we're going to get this standard message here. UTM is an app downloaded from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? Yes. Uh, definitely want to open it. And welcome to UTM. So here it is. So this is kind of our VM that we're going to be using uh, in order to run Windows 10. And the setup is actually very easy, but you have to follow the directions specifically. Now, this is on a, I believe it's a 2023, 2023 MacBook Pro. Uh, with the M1 Apple Silicon chip. And we want to make sure that we do this the right way. Now, when you first click to add a new VM, 
you are going to get a couple options here uh, virtualize or emulate and here is the big difference between these two okay if you're running an older macbook that has an intel chip in it an x86 chip uh, like an i5 or something like that you can click virtualize because it doesn't depend on the vm emulating the uh, cpu if you don't and you have an m1 or m2 mac you need to emulate emulation is much slower because it's basically making a digital processor and everything is virtual uh, so it takes much longer for things to go down now uh, if you can virtualize, I, I highly recommend virtualizing. But again, if you are on an M1 or M2 Mac computer, you're going to need to emulate. Now, this is an M1 MacBook Pro, so we are going to need to emulate. And uh, we will be installing Windows. And we just want to make sure this install Windows 10 or higher is checked because we are installing Windows 10. And we have this boot ISO image. So this is asking us what exactly are we booting from, and that's why we downloaded that ISO. So we'll click Browse, and in our Downloads folder, we have our Windows 10 ISO file that we downloaded earlier. We're going to go ahead and click Open. Last but not least, we want Install Drivers and Spice Tools checked. This just makes things run a little bit better uh, as far as like the windowed windows <laughs> and uh, you know the resolution and display in our virtual machine uh, and it really does make a big difference so I highly recommend leaving this checked and then we're gonna hit continue here it's asking us for our computer architecture so um, because we are emulating if you're virtualizing you won't see this but uh, because we're emulating we need to make sure that we're emulating an x86 64 computer uh, this is what EasyCAD is designed to run on. If we don't do this step correctly, we won't be able to install our EasyCAD drivers. So we need to make sure that this is set uh, correctly. For system, the default is fine. For memory, I like to give uh, eight, 8 gigabytes. I have 16 on this MacBook, so 8 is about half, and that's fine because I don't plan on doing much else when I have the VM open. Uh, and for CPU cores, I would say at least 4 um, it just depends on how many your computer has and what you have available as far as resources. Uh, but four is really kind of necessary in order for this process to go at least semi-smoothly. So I'm going to set that to four and we're going to hit continue. For storage, uh, it's asking, you know, how much storage do you need? If you have an old EasyCAD installation and a bunch of files that you want to reopen or convert out or something like that, uh, you may want to set this higher. Uh, something like 128 or even maybe 250 gigabytes. Uh, for me, I'm just really using this as a demonstration. We may use it for lens corrections. So 64 gigabytes is going to be fine. I don't plan on having a ton of files stored inside the VM. Uh, so 64 gigabytes is going to be just plenty for us. And we'll continue again. Uh, now, shared directory path. This is important. This is a directory, a folder on our Mac that both the Mac and Windows installation will be able to see. Um, because we are emulating and the emulated version of Windows is going to be so painfully slow, we don't actually want to download anything in Windows. Okay, that's why we downloaded our EasyCAD uh, Community Edition and our drivers beforehand. And now we can simply share a directory with Windows so that it can see those files too. So if we hit Browse, we can go ahead and set our shared folder to our downloads folder, which is where those EasyCAD files are stored, and hit open. And now both the Mac OS that's running on the laptop and uh, the shared drive folder in Windows, and I'll show you that when we get there, uh, they, they will have the same contents. And that's, that's really going to do uh, a lot for us. So uh, make sure that you set that and then hit continue. And we'll give it a name. So Windows 10 is fine. And the rest of this is stuff that we've already filled out, so we can leave that alone and hit save. And it's gonna build our virtual machine. So here it is. You can see the specs that we've uh, set up for it so far. And we need to edit a couple things before we start with this. Uh, we're just gonna do a little customization. So I'm right clicking here and we're gonna click edit. And we're gonna come into system. And for CPU, just for stability, we're gonna scroll down here and we're looking for QEMU Virtual CPU 
2.5 plus and we want to make sure we have the 64 bit version uh, the 32 bit version is not going to work we want 64 so we're going to select that we are also going to force multi-core it's just going to help with performance and uh, that's good for that uh, Q emulation here, the Q EMU, uh, we don't want to change anything in here. We want to leave this alone for input. We have USB support. We'll talk more about that in a few, uh, for sharing. We've already kind of set this up, so we don't need to do anything here. You can see the path to be shared is our downloads folder. And, uh, again, we will come back to that later for display. Uh, the Virtio VGA is what works best for me. Uh, leaving the GPU out of it, but just the Virtu Virtio uh, VGA uh, tends to work best. And I don't touch anything else in here. So we're going to leave that all alone. Uh, network and sound should be good. We're going to talk about this more during cleanup, uh, but here are our drives. So we have a virtual CD drive that has our, uh, our Windows installation. And this bottom one here is another virtual CD drive. And this has our Spice Guest Tools uh, ISO in it for when it comes time to install that stuff. Uh, in the past, I've had some trouble getting things to boot from the CD version of this. You can also change this to uh, be a USB drive if you need to uh, by coming down to interface and then we can select USB and that may uh, work a little bit better for you. Um, if, if the CD DVD drive uh, IDE type is not working. So uh, you may need to set this to U USB. I've had good luck with USB, so I'm gonna leave it there for now. And that's the last change we're gonna make. So we're gonna go ahead and save. And it's gonna save those changes and we're ready to run our virtual machine. So by clicking this play button, it is going to open Windows. So we'll go ahead and hit play. And we're gonna hit a key so that it boots from CD or DVD. And this part can take quite a while, guys. So uh, again, because we are emulating the hardware as well as the software operating system, uh, this part can be particularly slow. So I'm going to uh, just pause the video here so that you don't have to sit through the whole thing. And I'll let you know about how long it took once we get back. So I will see you guys in just a moment. All right. So the first time I did this, uh, it actually sat at that boot screen with the little wheel uh, loading icon. For like 20 to 40 minutes i mean it was like a really long time and this time only about 30 seconds passed and now we're at setup is starting again i'm not sure how long this is going to take uh especially because it seems to be different on these different installations i have done this once before just to make sure it all works before i show you guys um but uh i don't know how long we're gonna be here so i'll let you know when we come back if you see the occasional glitchiness in the screen like flickers uh, that is totally normal. Again, this time it only took about a minute, maybe a little bit less uh, in order for us to come to the setup section here. So that's great. Uh, we want to install English, English, US keyboard, and that's all fine. So we'll hit next. Uh, so really under two minutes uh, this time to get to this page. Much better than my first experience doing this. Um, here it's asking for a product key. If you happen to have one, you can put it in. Otherwise you can hit, I don't have a product key. We'll talk about how to activate this copy of Windows in a later episode of this little series here and we're booting again okay so <laughs> expect a, a little bit of bugginess guys uh, this isn't perfect once we get windows installed it works really reliably but getting it actually installed uh, can take a little bit of effort so we're back to the spinny wheel here uh, hopefully it takes under two minutes again i will report back in just a moment and we will try to get through that process a little bit faster Okay, guys, so we're back at the setup screen. Uh, it was a weird random crash, but we're back at the setup screen. Took about two minutes from boot to this screen again without touching anything. So let's try to move through this. So we're going to hit next. And again, I was saying uh, we will talk in a future episode about how to activate Windows later. But for now, we can hit I don't have a product key. It's going to install the operating system anyway. And we're going to pick an addition. I like Windows 10 Pro, so we're going to select that. And we're just going to wait for it to load. Be patient. Don't click things more than once. Again, it is emulating the hardware, so it is going to take a little bit longer. Uh, you've got Microsoft's normal agreement here, and we're going to accept the license terms and hit Next. 
And for this one, you can see our drive. This is a virtual drive. It's the 64 gigabytes we allocated for this project. So we want to use all of that. So we'll just go ahead and hit next. And this is all real time, guys. I'm, I'm letting it play in real time so you know what to expect. If I fast forward, I will tell you. And here we go. Okay, so now we're copying Windows files. So assuming we don't crash, uh, and we shouldn't, I, 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 despite the first time having taken longer, I actually didn't have a single crash. So the crash that you guys saw uh, just a couple minutes ago was the first time that's ever actually happened to me. Um, so we should be good now. Uh, so now we're going to leave it. I'm going to let it sit. This process can take considerably longer. Uh, again, it may go super fast. I, I don't know. Uh, like I said, booting was, was super slow for me the first time. If it goes super fast, I'll let you guys know. Uh, but I'm expecting this to take uh, uh, quite a bit longer, especially again, I can't say it enough because we are emulating the hardware, right? This is the trade-off uh, for doing this successfully on an M1 or M2 Apple computer is that we have to emulate the processor itself in order to get this to work. And that is uh, much slower than virtualization. So we're going to let this run uh, just for a little bit here. And as soon as it's finished, I will uh, pop right back in for you guys and we can talk about how long it took and what the next steps are. So again, I will see you in just a minute. Okay guys, so we're restarting now. It's going to restart many times, so don't freak out. <laughs> uh, this is supposed to happen, and uh, that took about 20 to 30 minutes. So the actual installation process, uh, a little bit longer than, than just getting started, but it's not uh, the worst. <laughs> it certainly could be worse. So uh, we are restarting now, and uh, this will probably happen more than once. I'm not going to push a key this time. It's telling me to push to boot from CD. That'll start us over. We don't want to start over. Uh, Windows is on there now, on the virtual drive. So we're just going to let it start up uh, like it normally would. And I'm going to show you how to get rid of that message later so that we don't have to you know, sit through that every time we're trying to start the VM. Uh, but for now, we just want to finish the setup process. So uh, the system is restarted. We did not boot from the CD or DVD again. And uh, now Windows is loading from the virtual drive for the first time so that we can complete the setup process. This should only take a minute. You may see some glitching uh, and, and some different things kind of go on with the screen as it's getting things started and uh, you know figuring out what it wants to do with the display. That's all fine. Don't worry about that. Just let it do its thing. You do not want to interrupt this process. So make sure uh, as we are that you are plugged in to a wall outlet. <laughs> we don't want the battery to die while we're doing this. Uh, make sure you don't close any of the windows. Literally just walk away from it for a few minutes and then come back, uh, which is what we're going to do here. So we're going to let this finish up. And when we get to our next dialogue section, we will continue forward. Okay, guys. So it's been about... 20 minutes at that getting ready and uh, just rebooted again. We still didn't push any buttons. Just want to make that perfectly clear. We still have not pushed any buttons and uh, it's loading up again here. So let's just let it do its thing. Let's see what happens. We're going to wait for a screen here. Maybe we'll get something. Maybe we won't. We'll see. But we are not touching anything at all during this whole process. If, if you haven't seen me click it on screen, like I have not clicked it. So we just leaving it alone. Oh, okay. This is new. This is different. We like this just a moment, which in emulated time could be a couple minutes. All right, guys. So we sat at that screen for about two to three minutes and now we are actually in the setup. So we're ready to start setting up windows. So uh, let's start with the region. Is this right? United States? Yes, it is. So we'll hit yes. And uh, it's just going to load again here for a moment, hopefully. Okay. That screen only literally took a minute. And now it's asking if this is the right keyboard layout. US? Yes. Thank you. So we'll hit yes on this one. No problem. And uh, we do not want to add a second keyboard layout. And we're back to just a moment. It could take a minute, guys. It could take 10. 
Honestly, I, I wasn't paying that much attention the first time I did this because it was slow. So, uh, oh, okay, new screen. Now we have some important setup to do. All right, well, you do that, and we will touch base with you again in a minute. All right, now it's saying, uh, please don't turn off your device after another minute. Oh, and here we are still setting things up. Uh, so just, uh, just gonna wait. Please, please don't interrupt this process, guys. You really don't want to do this again. Okay, guys, we might finally be done with setup here. Uh, that probably took another 15 minutes or so. So this process is slow. It can be slow. Uh, I would budget. <laughs> at least two hours for this. Um, I have not been working straight through while making this tutorial. I've been up around the shop doing other things, you know, putting stuff away, cleaning, uh, answering messages, things like that. Um, so, you know, it's something that you'll just have running in the background. It will finish. And you'll see when we're done with this process, um, everything will be considerably faster. Uh, it won't all take this long and be this slow. I promise. So, uh, we're ready to start setting up, I think. So, let's try actually uh filling out some of this information here so uh we're just gonna type in our name and uh we're gonna hit next and we need to create a password so let's create a password real quick uh my numlock is not on so we'll go ahead just one two three four that thing and we will confirm it okay and as you can see things are really picking up uh pretty quickly now uh, what was your first pet's name? Um, let's just make some stuff up. Goldie. Yeah, Goldie. That sounds like a good first pet name. Uh, let's see, what else? Name of the city where you were born. How about um, Los Angeles? Is that even right? It doesn't matter. Uh, typos aside, make sure you answer these questions correctly. That way if you get locked out of your VM... You can uh, you can get back in. What was your childhood nickname? Uh, Big Head. Uh, that's that's a pretty mean one. Kids are mean. Okay, next. So we're moving through. Oh my God, it's the dreaded just a moment screen. Um, let's hopefully this one will go fast. We will see. We we keep moving through this bit by bit, and that's part of what makes this process take so long is that you want to get up and go do something else. And then you look over and you're like, Oh, it's, uh, it's ready for a little bit more input and you have to give it a little more input and then you go away up oh, services. Great. Uh, let Cortana help you get things done. I would say not now on this. We don't want any extra, uh, services running in the background that are going to eat up our overhead because that's more that the emulator has to emulate. And we, we really kind of want to keep this bare bones. So, uh, when we get options like that, we're just going to say no. And we're looking at a black screen. Oh, thank God. Okay. Hi. Uh, great. Stellar. We're getting everything. We're, oh, we're still getting things ready. Okay. Uh, hopefully we will see a windows desktop here in, in just a second. Uh, this might take several minutes. Okay. Don't turn off your PC. All right, guys. So uh, I guess we'll just, we'll give this several minutes, hopefully. And, um, you know, maybe we'll come back to a Windows desktop this time. Okay. We're back and we don't want to miss any of this. So uh, it booted up. It took about three minutes and uh, we are here. We're in Windows. Uh, that's a big deal. You'll notice how smooth the cursor is. <laughs> in Mac OS. And then when we transfer into windows, it's just got a little bit of lag to it. Um, you will, you will get used to that, but that is the speed of emulation. Okay. And, uh, while windows sits and tries to get the drivers sorted out for the virtual display, um, we are greeted with the spice guest tools installer. If this doesn't come up automatically, you can just run it from the virtual CD, uh, down here inside of the file explorer. I don't want to push it too hard right now because I don't want to lock it up, but um, we're just going to stall for a second and make sure that everything is kind of turned on and ready to go. Uh, and it says, welcome to Spice Guest Tools Setup. Uh, setup will guide you through the installation of Spice Guest Tools, blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. So let's hit next. Uh, and again, this is just going to make the Windows VM display a little bit nicer, especially because we're emulating. So we do want to install this. Uh, it's, again, not going to be the fastest thing in the world, but this is the last slow thing we need to do. So uh, we're going to get through this installer here, and then we'll probably end the episode there. And we will pick up with a new episode because this one's kind of dragging on and it's been so long. Uh, it's been a long process. If you've made it this far, congratulations. 
um, you have Windows running on a Mac. Uh, and not just any Windows. Remember, this is an M1 MacBook Pro, uh, which uses an ARM processor. And we're running x86 Windows, which is uh, pretty, pretty amazing that we can even emulate that kind of processor. Uh, I did just accept the security prompt there, and it's moving right along. Uh, it's, do it's doing what it needs to do. Um, obviously, these are not like native speeds, but they're they're usable. Um, they're they're definitely usable, and uh, it's just going to keep going here, installing those drivers. Uh, as soon as it's done, we should notice the display get visually better. Uh, there should be a notable difference in our display quality. So we'll just let this finish up really quick, uh, and then we'll go ahead and close out the episode. And there it goes. It just kind of snapped in there and realized, uh, oh, hey, <laughs> there's a better way to do this. So that's why we're installing this. Uh, it, does, it does look considerably better, especially full screen, which is something we'll talk about next episode. So just going to cover kind of some tips and tricks on using UTM and the virtual machine itself and uh, how to kind of get things running right and how to navigate stuff. Uh, and then we'll get EasyCAD installed. <laughs> so um, we're, we're on our way, guys. You're, you're doing great. Uh, but I think we're, we're just about at the end of this one. I just want to make sure that this wraps up okay before we, uh, before we call it. All right, guys. So uh, Spice Tools uh, has been installed. And we can click Finish to close the setup. And here you are. You're in Windows 10. Uh, again, the x86, or well, technically it's the 64-bit x86 edition of Windows 10 running on an ARM processor, uh, M1 Apple Silicon uh, device and that in it in and of itself uh, is, is an achievement that's an accomplishment um, from here we're not going to do much uh, we're going to close out the episode I just want to show you if we do start here we don't want to just close this window we do want to shut this down like a normal machine so I'm just going to go to power and shut down and this will just close windows down the way that it's supposed to be closed down this shouldn't take any time at all uh, in fact I'm not even going to stop talking i'm just gonna let it shut down and uh in the next episode like i said we're going to talk about utm uh, a couple different ways to utilize it and uh, some tips and tricks just so that you're feeling comfortable with it before we start messing with easycad there we go windows 10 is shut down that only took uh, a few seconds there now we can close this window and uh, we can shut down utm and this will all be here for us the next time that we open it up so that's it for this episode guys thank you so much for watching don't forget to smash the like button if you got value out of this episode if you want to support the channel head over to masters.lasereverything.net to find out how and i think that's all i've got so we will see you in the next one